this video we're going to look at just some of the most important bits that you need to know from energy sources so you all did those projects and they're fantastic um, but this is just the bits that you definitely have to learn so the energy sources page and the project you did is all about where we get our energy from now what do i mean by our energy so our energy is the energy we use for electricity so if you look around your home now you're probably looking at a a laptop or a mobile phone that was charged up that was plugged into the wall into the socket where does that electricity come from where does that electrical energy come from and i'm also talking about the energy we use for transport so for our cars and trucks and airplanes where do they get their energy so that they can move around the country and fly from country to country so all of you in your research you figured out that there's two types of energy sources and the first type of energy source is renewable energy. And the second type of energy source is non-renewable energy. Now the definition for these are actually really important and you have to be careful in the words that you use. So for renewable energy, you cannot say energy that can be used again and again. The definition for renewable energy is an energy source energy source that will not run out so make sure you have this definition in your copies will not run out and re non-renewable energy sources are energy sources that will run out so you then need to know the different types of renewable and non-renewable energy so there's lots of different types of renewable energy there's wind solar and make sure this is all in your notes hydroelectric geothermal and there's another one called biomass now hydroelectric can be split into two it can be split into using rivers um, but there's also one called tidal as well where they use the tides coming in and out to generate electricity and non-renewable energy sources then are coal, oil, gas, and nuclear. So sometimes nuclear is considered renewable, but it's actually not. There's lots and lots of nuclear fuel there. The hydrogen is used for nuclear fuel, but it will run out eventually. But technically, it's not renewable, even though you could never really see us using all the uh, hydrogen that's there. Now, coal, oil, and gas are known as the fossil fuels. And that's because they take millions and millions of years to develop and they actually come from fossils. They come from the, the remains of things that lived millions and millions of years ago, like plants and trees that lived uh, a very long time ago. So the advantages, the big advantages of uh, renewable, the big advantages of renewable is that they do not produce CO2 and CO2 stands for carbon dioxide so that's a really important advantage that you have to learn and there's different advantage for each one as well which I got you to research in your project and are in your textbook but that's one that I really want you to focus on today they do not produce CO2 nuclear energy also does not produce CO2 so Wind, solar, hydroelectric, geothermal, biomass, and nuclear all do not produce CO2, but the fossil fuels do produce CO2, or carbon dioxide. And you see this, we use oil to, to put into our cars. It's converted, it's converted and it's refined to make petrol, but we put oil in our cars, and when we uh, drive the cars, we burn that oil or we burn that petrol, and it gives off this carbon dioxide. Some of you might have oil central heating at home, or some of you might have gas, or you might have a gas cooker, or you might light a coal fire. All of these things produce this ga gas carbon dioxide. Now, why is that not good? Why is that a bad thing? Well, that's not good because of something called climate change. And before we called it global warming, but it's not technically global warming anymore, it's climate change. Although it is kind of causing the earth to warm up on average. So. How does it work or what does it cause? Well, 
we live on planet Earth and we get our heat from the sun. So the heat from the sun, heat rays, they're called infrared rays, travel from the sun down to earth and they warm up the earth. Now, around us, we have an atmosphere. And that atmosphere kind of acts like a blanket. And what it does is it lets some of the heat from the sun escape, but it also traps some heat from the sun. So we have all this heat from the sun coming in. Some of it escapes and then some of it is trapped. And at the moment, it's the perfect blanket. It keeps our Earth the exact right temperature that it needs to be for life. Um, so everything that's evolved on Earth, all the living animals that live on Earth, they all are very well adapted and suited to the temperature that the Earth is at right now. When we add in CO2, what we're actually doing is when we burn fossil fuels is we're making this blanket thicker. So it's no longer the perfect size blanket. It's now like you're, you have a really, really heavy, thick blanket on you in the middle of the summer. It's trapping too much heat. So what's happening is all the heat is starting to be trapped in the atmosphere because there is too much CO2. And that's causing the average temperature on the, of the planet to heat up. Now, why is that a problem? Well, in the last kind of year, say in the last kind of 40 years, the planet has increased its temperature by about one to one and a half degrees Celsius. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but that has lots and lots of big problems. One thing that that's starting to do, or starting to cause, is it's starting to cause the polar ice cap caps to melt. And that's bad for lots of reasons. And one reason is that it's destroying habitats for polar bears, penguins, all of these things, they've no place to live because the, the habitat that they live in and that they've evolved in over hundreds of thousands of years is starting to disappear. But it's also causing sea levels to rise because all that ice that's trapped in the North and South Pole is now flooding into the sea. And that's causing the sea levels to rise by up to up to one meter already but they're going to continue rising or sea levels will continue to rise as these ice caps continue to melt and that's a problem for lots of cities that are kind of near the sea dublin for instance is really low level and by the sea london um, lots of big cities in asia in bangladesh in particular and there's millions and millions of people who are living in these areas and they no longer will be able to live there as the sea levels rise another thing that it's causing is it's causing deserts to get bigger. The planet is getting hotter and what's happening is deserts are getting bigger and that means less farm land available to grow crops and as the population of the earth grows we need more and more food but we actually are going to have less and less land for that. Another, um, another problem with it is it's causing more radical weather. So what's happening is we're getting much bigger storms, much bigger hurricanes. And obviously these are very, very dangerous as well. And it's also causing weather seasons to shift. So what we find is um, birds, for example, are returning when birds fly away from the winter and when they return in the summer, um, they're returning a little bit too early because the weather is that little bit more warmer now. And when they return early, it seems like there mightn't be any problem, but the, the flowers and the plants that they usually use to eat, those flowers and those plants haven't come into bloom yet. So they're returning early, but the food that they usually eat isn't actually ready yet. So all of these things are really, really big problems. And it's all due to producing or us producing carbon dioxide. So that's the big disadvantage for fossil fuels. And that was one thing that looking at your projects, we just need to make sure that all of you are fully aware of. So burning fossil fuels produces CO2 and CO2 leads to climate change. And these are just some of the many, many problems that can come from climate change.